Uh, uh, bu, bu. Hola, hola. Como esta mi gente? So this is my second time going on live today. I know, but there's a lot of stuff going on. So I just wanted to bring my followers up to speed. Basically, there's a whole controversy going on. OMG. So yeah, I just um, I just received a couple of requests for an interview because I guess whatever RuPaul has said in the media, now they want my opinion. But I'm not gonna, I feel like I'm not gonna, I'm not going to comment. It's too much, it's too much drama. Gosh, I live my life super happy. I don't have any issues. And I don't want any issues, so I'm not, I don't think I'm going to comment on that stuff that's happening in RuPaul right now because I don't want to get involved. It's too much drama. What do you guys think? What should I do? OMG. I'm having a moment. They're all asking me like, I mean, yeah, I agree she's ruining her own career, but I don't want to have... Listen, I have a very beautiful tour, okay, for Gay Pride this year, and I don't want no fucking beef, okay? No. No drama. I want to go see my fans. I want to take my pictures. I want to perform. I want to do my job, and then I want to go home. <laughs> I don't want any... No drama. No drama. But yeah, it's crazy. Like, people are actually asking me for interviews. Like, people want to... Like, news people. Like, can you comment about RuPaul and what she said about um, transgender people? Da, da, da. And I'm just like... No. <laughs> no. No comment. <laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> no. Y'all not gonna come ruining my happy day and my happy life with all your shitty comments about a topic that does not even pertain to most of y'all. I'm not doing it today. I'm not. I'm not. I mean, look, I made a Facebook post. On my Facebook, I did make a comment of what I had to say. And I want to be able to stand up for... I want to be able to stand up for trans performers... But at the same time, you know what? There is no at the same time. I do want to stand up for, I do, I do. I really do. I really want to. I really, really want to. But now I'm in a position where I'm like, yes, no. Are people are going to like attack me now? Like what's going to happen? Because I don't want to put up with that shit anymore. I really don't. I really, really don't. So, okay, I mean, what, what I'm thinking about, okay, so what I'm thinking about doing is I'm going to write, like, a comment, like, I'm going to make, like, a nice little paragraph and then post it, but I'm not going to do any interviews. I feel like that's probably my best bet, right? Oh, Meryl Streep, working with Meryl Streep was probably, like, the most intimidating experience as a new actress. Because, first of all, it's Meryl fucking Streep, you know? So I'm, like, learning how to, you know, act and, like, you know, all right, I'm in my scene. I'm in character. I'm not in character. I'm out of character. But she's, like, such a pro that, like, she taught me how to be in character, like, the whole day and just, like, stay in character. That was pretty cool. And we got to speak about, like, her kids and, like, stuff at home. That was pretty, that was pretty awesome. You're ready to read me? Hello, love. Mm. Make a video with Gia. Who's on here? Who wants to talk? That, who wants to talk about this with me? Maybe we should do that. We should go live with somebody. The fact that you have more important things to worry about only further tells you that this drama is really just media crap. I mean, listen. I feel like 
it is media crap, but at the same time, it's kind of important. It is important. The people are going to say what they want. You just have to do you and stick to your convictions. That's true. You know that your convictions comes from your gut. You know, it comes from your gut. Um, your solar plexus. Um, we'll see what happens. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I don't feel like I'm going to do any interviews because it's just like annoying already. I don't feel like, you know, I, I'm thinking about bringing the communities together and I'm just one person. So I'm going to try my best, but at the same time, I'm going to keep on keeping on. I have my tour coming up this summer and I'm going to be performing at gay prides at burlesque conventions you know, at various different types of places. So, drag places included. So we'll see if anyone denies me my place, which is not going to happen. But we'll see. I'm always up for a challenge. Plus, I'll whoop your ass. <laughs> you think I'm training for nothing? Okay, I got these guns right here. I don't need guns. I got these bad boys i'm just joking <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm just kidding i'm just kidding the media can make or break you stay true and humble i will stay true and humble i promise i will always stay true and humble i would love to see i wonder if can we get um gia on the line let me see I wonder, does anyone know Gia out there? Let's get, let's get Jiggly on the phone. Let's have these conversations, shall we? Let's talk about this. I could try, let me try to call Gia on the phone and see if she'll come on my live. Okay, hold on. Okay, let's see. Let's see. G I A. Hey. Yes, what's going on? What's up? Can you jump on my on my Instagram live? What well, bam? Can you jump on my Instagram live? We're talking about stuff. Yeah, I was gonna request. Hold on, let me do it right okay, now. Okay, okay, bye. <laughs> okay, she's gonna come on. She's gonna come on. <laughs> you see how you see how quick things happen? <laughs> Just kidding. Alright, let's see if she's gonna come on. Come on, Gia Gun. We're gonna be talking about the trans community and the drag community in a couple of seconds. Gia, 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 can't you see? You be taking so long to go on live with me. Yes. Waiting for Gia Gun. see me yes can you see me i think so what's Hola. going on hey so what's going on with all this controversy they they always come to me i'm like the first one whenever there's like this know, topic I was, just... <laughs> I was just scrolling through my email and like they were like they wanted to do some interviews too and i was like mm -hmm. i just need to like sit back and like think about it all and just kind of like really like process everything because I don't really want to like jump to conclusions I think it's I don't know you know like you never really know what was actually said in interviews and all right so let's just, pull like, it up if I go and do another interview like is it just gonna be misinterpreted because I of don't want to like come across the wrong way you know what I mean because you know you know when let's say like you know when you type something and someone else reads it you know the voice that they're making right correct because you know because it's like the tone of voice is in the reader 
So if let's say if you know, for instance, I made a Facebook post and I and I said, keeping drag in an outdated version of boys only sets the drag culture back decades and kills the diversity the LGBTQ community has to offer. Just a thought, but you know, people are gonna read it like this. Keeping drag in an outdated version of boys only sets the drag culture back decades and kills the diversity the LGBTQ right. community has to offer. Just a thought. Like, you know, that's how people at home right. are reading it. So it's like... So that's ooh. why I asked um, them if Oh, I with could. the magic filter. Ito. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Yeah. Some of us just, you know, we're not there yet. <laughs> no, you but silly, because I, I have I the just, same filter on. <laughs> I just asked for, like, if I could do a phone interview instead, but it's still going to be, like, printed. But these are my thoughts. I feel like... Honestly, I don't feel like it's new news. I feel like this has been a theory that's been floating around for centuries. I think trans yeah. women have felt this not included in the audition process to get on the on the show. And I also feel like us as performers that have now evolved into trans women and not just drag queens, I feel like it does change things, you know? And that's why I made a post earlier saying, as a trans woman now, I do feel the difference between a drag queen, right? Because we don't want to be confused as a man who dresses up in a wig for mm -hmm. performing because that's not our reality. But the reality is that, yeah. at least for me personally, like I found myself through drag. Drag Race was a Same. big part of my journey. And me too. My discovering of my gender identity so it just kind of hurts and makes me a little sad to hear such an iconic person that stands for unity and acceptance and has created this culture of such acceptance talk like mm -hmm. that well yeah i mean it's definitely it's surprising and it does hurt like i'm not gonna lie but you know i have my history with rupaul you do and with drag and you know i've only ever wanted to be a positive voice for my community and for those who who don't have a voice because when i came up through the drag circuit i was all i was around all trans women that you know basically just were sex workers and just made just enough money to get their costume made to feel fabulous on stage and I always wanted to like stand up for those girls. I would do their makeup backstage. I would take, I was in college for photography. I would do their photos. You know, I would even help them write their like ads, you know? You know what I mean? Right. Like I've made friends with these folks. So, and I feel like RuPaul comes from the same background. RuPaul comes from the same background, you know, of people who are just kind of lost, looking for their way. But I feel like now it's like, all right, so you have this big franchise. You have this influence. Why don't you want to be more inclusive to everyone back at home? You know, like everyone in Ohio and the Queens in Texas and the Queens in Chicago and the Queens in Florida, like they're so talented. And now it's like you're cutting them out of opportunities that, you know, they really don't have many other options, you know, which kind of, it kind of sucks. Right. And I feel so it's like, like me and you, I think a lot of people could look at us, well, they're so lucky because they got on that show. And, you know, at the time when we were on the show, we didn't identify as transgender. At least I didn't. And, you know, we weren't physically changing as we have now or as you have, you know. And I feel like that doesn't change us as people. That doesn't change us as it artists. It doesn't change you as a performer. Like, if you're a good performer, a performer, yeah, like hormones and surgery, it's, it's yeah, about the, your look changes, but drag is not just about looks. Right. And I feel like that's something that Drag Race has always instilled in people is that it's not about the aesthetic. It's about your performance. It's about your creativity. It's about what you bring to the table as a whole. And I feel like and whether or not you're transgender... Yeah, like whether or not you're transgender doesn't matter. Like people have to take that out. People think that, oh, so you're transgender, so you're like a special kind of drag queen now. Like, no, you know, it's still the same. We follow the same set of rules. We get the same judgment. We get the same amount of pressure. You know, if not, we get double the pressure because people Correct. feel that we have it easier when we don't have it easier. We don't. We have a much harder life, every single day life, you know, and the and for some of us, the show is like the highlight of our fucking day. Like it's a highlight right. of our year. 
it's where we get to be free so you're taking that freedom away from people who already don't have much freedom and that for me boils my blood because i'm like it's not fair it's not it's fair, not fair. And, I, and I also feel like trans women have been involved in drag for so long. And, like, what about girls like me that we wouldn't be, like, I wouldn't be where I am in such a happy state, finding my authentic truth and living my life as a woman if it weren't for drag and having the ability to express myself in a feminine manner, you know, without having to take hormones and actually like chemically transition because that decision is so big and I feel like drag was kind of a nice gateway to kind of play with all that and discover like okay is this really just for the shows and the lights or is this really my reality and so mm -hmm. now as a still current drag performer you know like I pay my bills on doing drag so like it does make me feel a little bit like you don't belong disowned, but just like i yeah. don't belong or like we're not doors for other trans performers that are just as good queens as any other you know gay man or any person that does drag and i think yeah it's, I, mm -hmm. I agree i think it's unfortunate but at the same time i think it also takes you know, girls like me and you to stand up for our community and to continue to create awareness and just educate people on what it means to be transgender and what it means to be a drag queen and what it means to mm -hmm. partake in this culture because I don't think a lot of people really fully understand, even starting with our own community. And, you know, that's why I look up to you so much because I feel like since you were on Drag Race, you have really taken control of your journey and have really taken the steps to fully complete yourself, I think, internally and mentally and spiritually. And that shows, you know, and the fact that you don't forget Thanks. about your community and things like this, I think that's important, you know, because as a trans woman, it's like you don't always want to talk about your past. Sometimes you just want to live and focus on your present and your future you know but um i think it's just sad you know and i think we just all it's have sad. different viewpoints all yeah have i know viewpoints. i just kind of feel like if i was rupaul and i had this great amazing show and all this stuff like i would want to do justice to all of the creative minds that are being silenced by society's norms like it would just be i understand it's rupaul's drag race and that's fine but the drag show is like i feel like there's just so much more to offer than gay men that do drag because honestly well, what I don't... i'm starting to see a pattern like some i can't even name all of the fucking queens that have ever been on the show fully because a lot of the, the girls have a similar aesthetic back to back every single year that it's like, okay, that's going to be the token, this type of girl, that's going to be the token, that kind of girl. And it gets redundant and it gets boring versus having drag kings, faux queens and, and saying, all right, you up for the challenge, prove yourself, prove yourself right. to the masses. Let's see what you can bring. But it's like a clear nope sorry i don't think so like that's not gonna work it's like right. what? and i'm it's all up for somebody protecting their brand and wanting it to represent a certain thing and i understand that traditional drag is you know dressing up as girls and i understand that maybe she wants to keep that as the foundation of the show but what i find very funny is that in the article also she mentioned yes we've allowed some males on the show who have physically enhance their body with fillers in their face in their ass whatever i don't get that but in my opinion it's like well some of those men could just as well pass during the daytime as a woman trans yeah so what is the difference because the mentality you know if, it, if we're talking about physical appearance and you know changing our bodies in order to look more feminine well many contestants have done that they didn't alter their body to look more masculine it's to look more feminine so why is it right that a trans person who 
yes, alters their body to look more feminine, but also mentally is there, is is not as valid. You know what I mean? It's it's like it's not fair. It's, like, it's discriminatory. It's a personal attack on trans performers. That's exactly also what it like is. Clear as day. Really Crystal clear. Is breasts. It's male. Pri it's gay like, male privilege. That's what it is. Gay male privilege. Well, we have so much like male representation within within the LGBT community, and I just feel like once again, I have like, the quote. The do you, is do you being want me to say the quote? Sorry just... to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> What's the quote? <laughs> okay, RuPaul says this is directly from the article. Okay, they ask RuPaul, "Would you allow a trans woman who has actively transitioned to compete?" Right. RuPaul answers, and I quote, probably not. You no. can identify as a woman and say you're transitioning, but it changes once you start changing your body. It takes on a different thing. It changes the whole concept of what we're doing. We've had some girls who have had some injections in the face and maybe a little bit in the butt here and there, but they haven't transitioned. Right. So that's like a personal, like, it's, it's directly to trans people who have transitioned. What does the transition have to do with their quality of performance? None. It none doesn't. It doesn't. You're, if you're well, a good performer or a bad performer, regardless if you get butt injections or not get butt injections or take estrogen or take t testosterone blockers, which is per very personal, mm -hmm. I think it's not. It's no one's business. Like if I go to to work at a drag show, you're not asking about my genitalia. You're Correct. not asking about my medication. You're asking about, hey girl, can I borrow that wig glue? Can I can I you can I use your duct tape real quick or whatever? You know, you're not asking Correct. those personal questions. So mm -hmm. I feel like it's it's kind of messed up. And you know what? For a while, like, why is it that RuPaul can make money off the trans idea with her tranny songs and her trans looking aesthetic, but then b block trans women from competing who are really worthy of the opportunity i feel like is not is not right either like how are you gonna copy our swag and then say we're not allowed well and the thing is you know that she grew up in the culture where there were a lot of other trans people that were obviously performers and i'm sure she has many friends who grew up in the same industry as her i just find it funny that it's finally now coming to the surface but i do think like i said it's not really any old news i feel like it's kind of been pretty much out there you know but nobody has really confirmed it and i feel like she's confirming it from her own mouth which is why it's such a big deal because it's one thing mm -hmm. to think something and to have hunches but it's another to actually have it in your face and i actually have my own personal like thoughts around it all that i've actually kind of been holding off from expressing because like i said you know and like you said you don't want drama this is something that we do and something that has changed our lives right drag race has changed our lives completely it has and i will never talk bad about somebody who gave me such a great opportunity and saw something in me at one time i just wish that she could see the same thing in me now as the woman as she did as a boy who dressed up in wigs because I it's feel not like, look, honestly, my performance aesthetic, I haven't changed much. I haven't, you know, I don't think I've changed that much. I still have that same swag. So I wonder, like, I don't know. I wonder if a, trans a transitioned queen can return to do All-Stars. Is that also out of the question? I mean... Even though she said, she kind of said it already. But I mean, you know what I mean? Because that kind of sucks. Because what happens if you wanted to go back? And now, is that basically Correct. telling you that you can't? Correct. Well, you know, I definitely was interested in returning for this season. Okay, and I Even... have another question. No, sorry. Go ahead. Finish. Mm -hmm. Well, I was just going to say, you know, I was interested in in coming back for this season. And I feel like I had a good stake at it. And, you know, I was pretty much there. Um, until I 
kind of did mention something that was, I feel very valid and very necessary, which is that I wasn't going to go in there and be anything less than what my legal documents say and what I identify as. And, and I will you tell you, and I will tell everyone, I didn't get a call back. And that was the last time that I heard from him. And the, la and the next time that I heard from them was a call saying that I hadn't made it on this season. And you know what? I just had to accept in the moment that this was God's way of telling me that it wasn't my time. Because to be honest, right here, right <clears throat> now, at this moment, in this state of my transition, maybe going back on that show and being on TV wouldn't be the best thing for me. You know? Yeah, I feel, I feel bad. But you know what, too? I want to I wanna also bring up another topic. Why do people feel like it's okay to allow such discrimination just because a person gave us a break? Why is it, why does it, because people are like, oh, well, you shouldn't be making a big deal because drivers did A, B, and C things for you. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, okay, so I should, I should be allowed to be discriminated against, stepped on, talked because you gave me an opportunity like i don't i don't understand why people would be like no but don't bite the hand that feeds you and da 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 when it's like okay so when the hand is an abusive hand i can't walk away with my dignity correct and call things out i'm not allowed to because this person what threw me a fucking bone at one point in my life i don't i feel like it's so unfair you know just person well I think I with this article now I think times are changing and I think people are seeing a different side and I think you know maybe girls like yourself who did speak up at a different time you know um, will now see some of the truth that maybe you were facing at that time I can't really speak for you yeah. or previous things you know because we all come from different places well listen but what really matters to... is the present yeah. and how we move forward about it and i think totally we're doing great and you know everyone that's watching this obviously me and carmen really appreciate it and all of you that are inboxing and sending so much support and so much love honestly i do appreciate it and can guarantee that we'll continue to do as much as we can for we're going to continue to everyone us astonishing amazing performers i'm not giving up as but now more than ever i am not giving up my showgirl my my whole bit like i won't i was you know i've been planning a new um a new show for the past few I years see. yeah so exciting. yes so i'm really excited to you know be able to perform not only on burlesque stages not only on you know, um, like gay pride stuff, trans pride stuff, but also for on a drag stage, I would love to be able to still have that option. And I, and I won't stop, you know, I won't stop performing. I won't stop entertaining. I won't stop being the best that I can be. And that's it, you know, like I'm here to just perform as an entertainer. Unfortunately, I don't have the power that RuPaul might have or whatever, but it's not gonna like stop me and it shouldn't stop you either. And I hope that we get to perform together at some point. If not, we then I'll see you at DragCon. We should do a we should, do, we a should tour. do a tour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let me get through. I have two tours coming up. One for Gay Pride, and I'm doing one um, Latin American run, um, just to help, like, just to help with activism because stuff's like kind of bad. Weren't you doing something in Chile at one point? Yeah, I filmed the yeah. show, The Switch Two. It's actually a, it's like a drag race competition, but you know, out there they're so supportive, and out there, I think trans is um somehow it's not as out there in the media and stuff but i feel like it's accepted in a different way you know yeah well we'll see we'll run in, we're, we'll run into each other again i'm sorry to have called but i would love for us your, to do something your weave together. are you doing uh -huh, my weave? fake hair <laughs> <laughs> i'm taking out my extensions because um it's time i think i'm gonna rock a wig during the day well you what have do long you do? hair I wear my hair in this top knot. I just went to the gym. I know you do. You're so good. That's all. I'm very. We like, need to start a spice. fitness channel. We need to write a recipe book. I need you. I need you to coach me. Okay, I can coach you. I know exactly what's the right foods and the right exercises that'll help you. I swear to God, every time I go to the gym or anytime I talk to anyone about fitness, I show them your body. 
I said, this is what I want to look like. Oh, look at, yeah. Look at how lean. Are you still vegan? Um, sometimes. <laughs> what is that? Because mean? it's hard. It's hard to find vegan food. It um, is hard. On the East Coast. So. But you've been training hardcore like every single day, right? With that every day, cute yeah. Latin guy. Raphael. And he posted about you the other day. That was well, so he's so sweet. sweet. I Are know. you kidding me? I was so gagged. I was like, you better be. Yeah, because you know what? Because when you allow people to get to know you as a human versus a character, they care about you more because they see like you're genuine. Definitely. Yeah. So and that's why educate, like, I really wanted to show oh. that. Yeah, when you educate people and let people know who you are, you know, they believe you. <laughs> it's like... Well, yeah, because it's like, it's the truth. You know what I mean? It's like, this is who I am. Right. You know, so I can't do a push People so quick to assume. And that's where our job comes into play. But see, I feel like it's so hard to break the stereotypes that people have of trans women and this whole situation with like RuPaul is like making it harder because it's closing the door, you know, that we have in order to access, um, access people so that they can see who we are and they can see the type of people that we are and they can see the folks that, you know, they can learn to appreciate us. I guarantee you that, you know, if it wasn't for drag race, drag queens would not have been so accepted you know how you know it was very like accelerated you know what i mean like so many people were into drag queens like you have you know biological females dressing up as drag queens for how yeah, like how are the bio queens supposed to feel now insulted as well like yeah. i have a good friend who's cisgender female but feels mm -hmm. trans like male and is a fierce drag queen and makeup artist and like now feels like they no longer have a chance at getting on because they don't fit the expectations or I guess what her, you know, the spectrum is. And that sucks. It's so dumb. It's, it, it does. It sucks. I feel like if RuPaul or RuPaul's PR or anyone at World of Wonder was smart, you know, they would embrace, they would, I mean, look, are they even paying attention at the fucking DragCon? Don't they see the people that are coming through their doors? Don't they see that it's like everyone, it's a spectrum of people that come in. You have kids that are, that do drag, you know what I'm saying? Correct. You have everyone that does drag. So why would you And maybe it's that? not so much, see, and this is where I still need to like think about it because I think she's specifically talking about being a contestant on the show. I don't think it means that she hates trans people. I don't think it means that she's transphobic. I don't think it means that the show doesn't like trans performers. I just think she's trying to put her foot down in terms of the criteria that the show requires in order to be a contestant. Nothing more, nothing less, you know? And that I can honestly say I do see the importance in it. I can see. It's bullshit. The importance, but it doesn't make it right. And obviously for girls like us, it hits a sensitive spot, but I don't feel that it's a time for us to step down. I feel like it's a time for us to step up, continue to yeah, talk, definitely. continue to create conversations. Um, I'm actually going to be starting a new conversation on my Instagram so everyone that's watching this if you can follow me um, but starting March 31st on Trans Awareness Day which is actually celebrating one year ago when I came out on Instagram actually as public wow transgender. it's been a year already it's oh been my a gosh year. congratulations I'm be doing, um, hashtag 30 days in transition which will be a conversation that I'll be doing every day um, on Instagram with the post covering a different topic, just things that I've discovered in my journey. So if you're watching this, I'd love it if you would follow me on that. And I'd love it if you would follow me, Carmen. <laughs> I will follow you, definitely. Don't I you think, think that's a cute idea? idea? I actually got it from my friend Cassandra, who she started it first. She did her 30 Days in Transition, and it really inspired me to do my own and hopefully will inspire other girls 
and other trans men to share their story, you know, and just yeah. like, educate people on what it means to be us. Because I don't think a lot of people really know. I just think they think they know. Right, exactly. That's true. They think they know from what they've gathered from other people's opinions, which is dangerous because it's, you know, so. not a reliable source. All right, babe, my phone's about to die. Well, I love, I love you, I miss you, and I love everyone that has watched this. I miss you, too. You I want, I'm serious. I really want you to help guide me on my diet. Come to my house. Let's shoot a YouTube video. <laughs> Come here. It's, listen, my, uh, my place is so healing, okay, and so loving and peaceful. Come stay with me. We'll shoot some videos. We'll talk. Okay. We'll talk. We'll exchange ideas. And, I'm serious, yeah. too. I'm serious too. I'm you know I'm serious. Okay. All right, babe. Well, I love you. Show me your weave later on. I love you. Mwah.